Well, I'm suffering with a problem this morning. I've turned this little step on this project here, and I absolutely cannot measure the length of it. I can't get in there with my ruler. Whatever will I do? Well, I made a little rule scale fastened into a piece of aluminum, a handle, and now I can very well get in there and make the measurement. Now I'm going to show you how to make one of these little devices. Well, howdy again. It's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher. And if you've ever had this problem, although it, it seems kind of silly, doesn't it? And you don't have to make one of these. You can order it from Scamazon and get a steric. And it'll only cost you about $110 for this, along with that four or five different length rules. So, I've been working on this for three or four days, even though it looks like a two-minute project, because I've tried many different methods here, and I'm going to show you those and ultimately end up with this. But let's get started by taking a look at the original ones in the wonderful Steric book. In my travels at auctions over the last 50 years, I have never ever seen a number 423 steric tempered steel rule with holder. And as explained earlier, there are five rules, one, two, three, four, five, and here are the sizes. Read that if you want. I'll put a still picture at the end. Steric has been offering this tool for many, many years. The catalog I just showed you was 1990, and this Sterrett catalog is only about three or four years old. But here it is again. Read through this if you want, and look it up on the internet for the prices. You'll be shocked. Please let me know if you like the research that I do, because it takes a lot of time. I'm going to cut it out, because I don't hear any comments on that. But anyway, looking through the old Lufkin catalog, sure enough, they had one also. And it's the um, number 20S set. And almost always they, they come in a little pouch because you're going to lose these little pieces in the chips. And I suppose that's why I never see any at auctions. But I could not find anything similar to this in the Brown and Sharp catalog. I want you to note here that this holder will hold the rule at a slight angle rather than straight in. I've had this little rule since 1966, and HS stands for Henry, well, I'm not going to tell you his last name, but this man worked at West Clocks probably starting in the 20 or 30, 20s or 30s, retired in uh, the mid-60s, and his tool box, box <coughs> was brought to my house for my brother to price these things because his daughter was trying to sell them. But Henry was quite grouchy. I didn't really know him, but he was the grandfather of my friend Jack Rant, and he said he just wasn't really a nice man. So what's the big deal here? If you want a stubby, short ruler, just chop off one of your cheaper advertising rules. Not this one. This is a pretty good rule. So being the lazy man that I am, I thought, I'm not going to make one of these. There's got to be something around the shop here that I can use. So in the radius gauge set, and this is a cheaper one, I don't know where I got it, but it's obviously made offshore. But look here, there's a little holder here that is actually made to hold the radius gauges. But in fact, we can use it to hold a little rule. Look at the slit here. And of course, that is at an angle not unlike the one that I just showed you in the Lufkin catalog. Well, unfortunately, the little slit here isn't wide enough to accommodate the brown and sharp, but so what? I'm undaunted. So what I've done here, where is it? I've got an advertising rule here, and I've been chopping it off here for demonstration purposes. So I just cut off another piece, and it very readily fits in there. And then you can tighten it up, and it can be held at an angle like that. So that's pretty darn awesome. So I bet you can get one of these pretty darn cheap and then throw the radius gauges away and just use the holder so you don't have to go through the agony and pain that I have just suffered through for two days. So I was looking through my toolbox and here is a steric number C. I think they're lettered. Notice that this uh, pin vise is a four jaw chuck, isn't it? Not a three. It won't work if you have a three, but 
this is very usable. Now they make these in many different sizes, so the smaller sizes will not work. But look at this. See, it can be held quite nicely. And by the way, there's metric and imperial here. You can, and there's advertising on the back side. So that's very usable if you have one of these. But pro how many people actually have pin vices? I don't know. Probably not many. Let's explore this just a little further, if you can take it. Now this is an X-Acto knife, and they made them in many, many different styles. I like the older ones that are solid aluminum over the red-handled plastic ones, but again, it's got a slit in there to hold the little blades, the little X-Acto blades for hobby work. And then you can just tighten this up. And sometimes I have to do this off-camera here and then edit it because it's just a little bit more difficult. As you can see, I went out of frame, but anyway, there you go. But it's a little bit clumsy and big. As a matter of fact, it's awkward and it's, it's ridiculous. Don't do this. You know, I'm unable to sleep. I'm unable to stop thinking about things. So even when I'm in my easy chair or I'm in bed, I can't turn the wheels off. So I'm thinking, I can't, I almost got out of bed and ran down the shop. But this is another X-Acto knife. I think they only cost 12 cents, so get one of these. I used to have a hundred of them. I think I threw them out. But again, this is used for holding X-Acto blades. But the problem here is, and let me fumble off screen with this, be right back. So you can see this will hold it, but there's almost no collets, this is a collet in here, there's almost no collet sticking out. So matter, no matter how tight you get it, it's probably easy to pull it out of there. So, no good. But let's try a variation of this. And that's where I spent three hours. So this is the original collet that came with it. And I thought, no problemo, I can make that in eight or nine minutes, maybe 15. But the slit is the real problem. Plus there's a, a taper here. Can you see that? Because I wanted to make another one of these that is longer so that it would hold, it would grip the rule better. Cut my nails the other day, finally. So I've got a host of uh, slitting saws and I had three the same size here. They're about three inches. And uh, the problem was, and they're all 24,000 thick, but I absolutely could not get a straight slit. I practiced. I tried every little trick in the book. I tried all of the different ones, thinking I had a dull one. I trammed the head, and I became so frustrated, I, just, I threw a lot of the pieces away, and I wasn't even going to do this video. But I thought, eh, got to have a little more perseverance than what you've had here, Tobal Cain. This is the original Exacto. This is the one I made, but you know, I put in quite a bit of time on this even before I made the slit. So if you got a half hour in this business of turning it down and stepping it and tapering it and threading it and all of that, and then you screw up the, the slit, it is incredibly uh, discouraging. However, I did get one here that is usable, but uh, don't try it, or if you do let me and are successful, let me know, and this will work. But notice that it is longer on the very end here, and I should have even made it possibly a little longer, but these are rehearsals, so let me put the rehearsal into the knife and show you what I got. So there it is, and actually this works just great. But if you do make it, make it just a little bit longer right here. Yeah, I just work out of my mind. I do not have a blueprint. But again, these are very cheap if you want to just modify one. And I challenge you to make that little piece. But you do have to have slitting saws. Do not attempt it probably with a hacksaw or a bandsaw. I didn't try it. Maybe you can do it. But it would be pretty hard to make a straight slit that didn't taper off on you. I just found this piece here. I thought I threw it away. I made many of them, most of them. I just took the garbage out, by the way. But uh, look at the sand. This is larger stock, 3 8 And how crooked some of them went. More crooked on one side than the other. Now, we are going to do this on uh, 
on this. So you stand by for that. But let me tell you how I got the inspiration for this. And I should have just done this. Forget about all this other craziness. You know what? In my recent videos I've been talking a lot about Elmer Verberg and his great book Elmer's Engines. And uh, if you are interested in that, by the way, go to this QR code. It'll instantly, instantly bring you to the site. And you have to find the Elmer's Engine page. And this will be at the very, very end. And I printed it out. And that's how you can find it if you're interested. Although there are no dimensions, I'll put a still picture of this at the end. But this is how I became uh, oh, enthused about this a couple days ago, looking through that. So Elmer had a very simplistic method of doing it and there are several samples of what he did and that's what I'm going to do in this video right now. And let me ask you, was that a long enough introduction? Some will find this interesting. I was looking around the shop for some 3 16 aluminum to make this and of all things, but I, I already got an hour invested looking for things and I ran into this in my uh, stock rack the exact length I wanted of 316 stock, and I must have had these for years because look at how crispy that, that tape is. But believe it or not, you know, I'm crazy. I know I'm crazy like Lindsay. Because I thought, well, I don't want to waste any of this. I'm saving this for that very special job. No, use it. You're 80 years old, you fool. Of course, make this any length you want, but here it is about three and a half inches long. You could slit both ends like Elmer sample, but for the purposes of this video, all I'm going to do is slit this, and how long is that? That can certainly vary also. Got a hundred rulers here, and I still can't find them. Got to put my. That's about 7 16 long, and it will depend on the diameter of your slitting saws if you have any. And if anyone is successful, or if anyone knows why I was getting such a crooked slot, let me know. I th even this one is a little bit crooked, as you can see, but it won't matter one bit. So let's stop, step over to the Bridgeport Mill, and I hope you have a milling machine, and let's get on with it. Although I spent a lot of time uh, modifying my holder for the slitting saw. And they never run true. They always lope. I've noticed that for over 50 years. No matter what kind of cutter I use on an arbor, it lopes. And I've watched a million other videos and everyone else's <laughs> cutters lope as well. Who cares? Well, here's the setup. And it's not like I have a shortage of slitting saws. And I've tried a lot of these, although many of these are either dull or too, way too thick. So you need thin ones. Again, this is about 24 thousandths, I believe I said. So all you got to do is mic it, and it doesn't appear to be any set on the teeth. I think some people are going to say, well, you went crooked because it has lost its set. But as far as I can tell, these slitting saws do not have set. Okay, here's how to set it up. Notice there's a thin parallel. I'd, I should have put my smaller vise on. And do not stick out any more than is absolutely necessary. Make sure it's down and tighten your vise. Now we have to find the center of the work. That's 187,000, so half of that is, uh, is what, uh, 92 or 93, something like that. And half of the thickness is uh, about 12,000, so. I'm going to touch off and then raise the table 102 thousandths. We don't smoke marijuana down in Muskogee like the hippies do in San Francisco. Well, I don't smoke and I don't chew and I don't know any girls that do. But anyway, I've never used cigarette papers because I would have thought people would think I'm a hemp head or something like that. But remember, somebody sent me, I don't know how many packs of these, and the, the, the reason I'm telling you this is it's cigarette papers, and I think they're all sold for marijuana now. I don't believe anybody actually rolls their own out of tobacco. So, uh, anyway, take a piece of that because it's 1,000 thick. That's the point I was trying to get, and I lost my train of thought. So I'm going to set this on the work, and I'm going to bring the blade down onto it, and... 
close to it then I'll raise the table until I have some drag and I don't mean drag on a joint. Now notice that the paper is kind of loose so I'm slowly cranking up the table until it drags. You know I never did smoke tobacco or anything else. Never did. All of my friends did. Now really you're one th that feels good. <laughs> well that's what they say when they smoke this. It feels good I guess. So <laughs> I keep coming up with ridiculous, uh, uh, never mind. So I'm one thousandth away, but we don't need to worry about one thousand, so I'll back it away. And now I will zero out, well, I'll show you. So I will zero out the graduated collar. Make sure you're clear of your work and raise it a hundred and two thousandths or whatever you came up with. I should now be on the true center of the work. During my experimentation I suspected that the saw was flexing like that so I made two flange washers. There's one on the bottom as well to stiffen it up. And But you need this distance here of about three quarters of an inch so I didn't want to make the flanges too large in diameter. Originally I was running this in back gear, but much faster is fine. All that work for 10 seconds of cutting. Well, even that slit is far from perfect, but take a little needle file here, three-quarter, three-corner, and a file a little, um, I don't know what you call it, but you'll see why in a second here. Okay, ready to go. Now what you're going to find on these advertising rules, and that's what you'll want to cut up. You won't want to cut up a good brown and sharp or, or mitt the toil, but there's 21 thousandths, uh, 21, 27, so they're going to vary. So it's going to be hit or miss as to whether or not they fit into the, the slot, and that's why I put that little... Uh, uh, angle on there with a three-corner file, but if this one does start Tap it with your big lead hammer and you're ready to go But let me tell you something else here If your slit is too wide and you cannot get it to grip Here's what Elmer suggests that you just lay it down and tap on it. In other words close it up a little bit for the tightness. You don't want to have to mess around with screws or anything like that, but then if it gets too tight you can also pry it back open and again that's the purpose of the three corner file so that you can tap your rule into place. To make it look more finished file a chamfer on there or round it with a file. I'm going to use a radius tool and make a nice radius on there just because I like the looks of it. But if you're making one with a a slit on both ends it will be unnecessary. I am fully aware that there's probably only three people in the United States that have a severance radius tool of 3 sixteenths diameter so and I've shown this before but I'll do it again. No, this isn't a 4-inch Sterrett ruler. This came in one of those toolboxes that I bought recently, and I'm thinking maybe that the man cut it off so he had a stubby ruler, but more than likely he damaged the rule or broke it off, although it's pretty darn clean here. But a specimen like this would be just great for making that stubby ruler. But that's a sterret, so I would recommend using one of these advertising rulers, or you can buy this little general. Is this a general? I probably got one here someplace, but these are... That's not one either. They used to sell a little general ruler rule, 
at the hardware store for 25 cents and I required every student to get one of these the first couple years but that was a failure because they would steal it from each other and uh, lose them and at the end of the year they were everywhere in the lockers. Well during rehearsals I cut one of these off. Now these are stainless steel so I spent time with the <laughs> Dremel, grinding it off with a little tool and then sanding it. That was a nightmare and totally unnecessary because here's all you need. Cut it off to whatever length you want and then put it on your little sander and square it off or whatever. But it's very nice for you to, a matter of fact I insist that you start with the factory end rather than just lopping it off in the middle here. That way it's going to be more accurate. But then again, whenever you use a rule, this is only a seven, uh, a semi-accurate way of doing things with, with a rule. Semi-accurate. Semi-precision. Now let's review and I'll show you all the different methods I've got here. And I fully apologize for making a four minute video 20 minutes long. My brother would say you're wasting your time. You're making an unwanted, unneeded tool. But anyway, here are five different methods of doing it. But ultimately, I would suspect that this is the method you would use if you have a slitting saw. There's probably a hundred other ways of doing it. Let me know what you think in the comments. This is Mr. Pete saying so long for now. Still pictures at the end, you know. This was me in 1960 when I got my Vespa and it gave me total freedom. But believe me, I wasn't that handsome and I certainly wasn't a letterman. Did I ever tell you the story about my brother borrowing my Vespa? I didn't like people borrowing it, but he would go... Well, anyway, it involves a <laughs> sawed-off shotgun. Double barrel.